Hello, beloved. Yes, we will see each other. Well, it's more you will see um, this uh, camera in <laughs> um, this vessel um, every day for a while. I hope you are following up, you are walking in what the Holy Spirit wants to do this month. We talked about the voice and the word. Again, these are not necessarily preaching materials, not, not even teaching. Because I trust that you have this in your hearts already. You're not fighting with these thoughts in your mind of, you know, the tree of knowledge. Yeah, but it's true, but that, what about this? And, you know, I trust that you hear the word and it's just releasing inside you as clarity, as power by faith. I want to talk to you um, I would say one of the most touching um, topics, subjects um, that I, I've seen. And I have to tell you, this is on the road to maturity. So everything gets uh, rosy and everything gets like so perfect, so good, nothing nothing can touch you nothing comes around everything it's so beautiful um you might say i i don't know what you're talking about brother val <laughs> but it's okay maybe you can put it aside and you'll come back to it can you be offended in god it's not if you can be offended in general, because that's a simple answer. Um, I'm sorry to say that there's so many offenses um, that um, people keep in their hearts and they get hurt way more than the person that offended them or situation that offended them. But can God offend you? deep maybe you are in a trial now maybe you've been in a trial for a while and the best answer that you have it's like i have to trust the will of god right like the like the uh, other evangelicals let's call them that way no god is sovereign he knows it's his will and that brings you know stillness to your heart if you want this if you don't want this it's up to you I'm trying I'm believing I'm working on this and I have to tell you that lots of times when I heard people saying that even trying to uh, appease and and bring stillness to their souls and hearts was still trying to deal with this offense that they had towards God. They were offended. But since God is God and they are just you know, piece of dirt with some breath from God that once He's going to give us eternal life or give us heaven, right? I exaggerate. I know none of the people who listen now are thinking that way. but. But this difference is so big that you have to, you know, well, it's God is God. He knows it. So you kind of cover over your offense and um, you let it go. How can I be upset with God? I mean, and what's that doing? What's that ga gaining? <laughs> God is God, right? So I found out that lots of times when people try to be at peace with God, they, they try to get over an offense. They haven't solved it. Mm -mm. They're not joyful in it. They're not in perfect knowing and relationship. They are just kind of like, I don't know why this, but God knows, right? That's not a relationship. 
you think your father that loves you <laughs> doesn't give you a stone if you ask for a bread that loves you more than you can imagine and you ever described love in your life that father that loves you kind of does thing and says well no i'm not gonna tell you i don't want to talk to you just suffer just suffer is this your father god no <laughs> no 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 you, you can't just throw things in the air and just uh, let them be maybe some people can but that's not in the relationship that he established with my heart with me and with lots of you so uh, being offended it's it's a real thing i found this place in proverbs 18 verse 19 it says a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city wow wow and contentions are like the bars of a castle and that's bars doesn't talk about the places you drink okay <laughs> i had to say that yeah the the restrictions right the the walls of restrictions the bars of a castle right it's like not do not enter it's a big do not enter on that person's heart that don't even don't even bring that topic don't talk to me about it right that's offense right there so the word offended in uh, in Hebrew it's pasha p-a-w-s-h-a-h -H. it's a primitive root identical with through the idea of expansion and that kind of got me thinking it's translated somehow break away from just authority like trespass offend revolt transgress there is this offense or being offended is like it's stretching you so much that it's breaking it's creating a breach inside you one part you maybe still stay connected but the other part is separated it's like you are broken in two parts that's the word offended in hebrew very very interesting lots of times the rebellion in some kids hearts rebellion in some christian hearts in in people in the brothers and sisters the rebellion is a sign of an offense they got deeply offended can they be offended by god maybe there's somebody they prayed for and nothing happened and god never told them why something for their life something that an abuse uh, some a rape some something it's like where were you god you know the the pain of what happened is less than that disappointment in god i prayed i believed i fasted i did everything the whole church prayed lots of people pray those faith nothing happened okay god's will i'm not getting involved with this too deep you know what happened something broke apart that person is broken the heart is broken he is offended Don't, do not try to heal deep wounds <laughs> with some little patching over some little annoyment that you put on the top that's a deep offense like a sword deep inside new testament now 
Romans 14 21 it is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak the word offended in Greek it's skandalizo and uh, basically would be to entrap to trip up or make it stumble figuratively right or entice to sin entice to sin entice to rebel it ties to transgress in ties to do what can God offend can you be offended at God offended in God can you Luke 7 probably know what I'm gonna read about but that's that's so real again I I put the disclaimer in the beginning this is probably not for um, children people just jumping in this flow of growing spiritually right that cannot yet discern that okay this is a little bit heavy meat okay so close the disclaimer I had to say it again Luke 7, when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And that very hour he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, dead are raised, the poor have gospel preached to them. And then he adds, Blessed is he who is not offended because of me so are you telling me Lord that you are not the one taking care of make sure you are not offending anyone you know some people can blame you and says well you should not be a stumbling block for and that's what he says there for the weak person it's very important but there is a place where Jesus himself was being a stumbling for John the Baptist and he says blessed are those that are not and there is a place I think in Peter where he says that the Lord has raised this stumbling block stumbling stone and all this uh, Jewish minded people that expect Messiah in a certain way they stumbled over that and they couldn't believe him crucified him right so um, why can't they see why don't you make it easier for them to just clarify give them what they want explain to them so they can understand um, and not let them stumble so God is a wise father he has a purpose for your life. His purpose is eternal. And he is not moving away left or right from fulfilling that purpose. What is your purpose? 
what do you think God's purpose for your life is? Maybe that's that's better. Because some things change as you mature, as you grow in the Lord, as, you know, things are changing. And um, so maybe ministry, power, miracles, saving souls, love for everyone. Build a loving, loving Christian body that everybody just gives his life for the other one. What's what's the goal? What's what's in what do you think God wants for your life? A strong family, leaving a legacy uh, be behind. You love your family, you give your life for your family, you raise healthy and very strong in the Lord type of children and then you start this legacy. What 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 is this? You might say, well maybe it's few of this. In my life, if I look back in all these years, what the fruit that remained through all the you know experiences and ministries and achievements and which are all amazing great but the fruit that remained was knowing him knowing the lord beyond circumstances earth values life priorities When everything made sense or it didn't make sense, as long as I could talk to him, that was all I wanted. See, when, when you go through things that kind of make sense and he answers the prayers and you cast that headache and it's gone like this and... When you stand on this and stand on that, and when when things make sense, you have a conversation. He's such a loving father, so glorious, and his light is just beautiful, and his presence is so glorious. Everything makes sense. It's <clears throat> it's good. But you, when you get in a place where you don't understand, you don't quite feel the presence. You don't quite understand what's happening, then communication with him it's very hard um, almost impossible. See when people get into this place, you know they tried everything John the Baptist style, right? I did everything right i I follow this. I gave my life. I eat all the locusts. Um, I, you know, I I stayed faithful to my calling, right? And nothing kind of comes back when I need it most. That's all I asked you, Lord, right? Um, when they get to that place, it's extremely hard to make sense of it. And to start a worship session, right? And you know what happens with most of these uh, people? Their heart is hardening. Most of the times when you see a hardened heart is because of an offense. Because some place, yes, could be an offense from a brother or sister. But I would say even those have their depth and can wound deeply. When you are offended by what God didn't do or why God, what God did, um, that's way deeper. Because that's the one that you are um, supposed to trust. And if you have this unforgiveness towards the person that hurt you, how can you have unforgiveness towards God? You forgive God? <laughs> yes, I had, this is a practice, but I had this um, Richard Wurbrand 
which I, I find lots of his uh, things super extreme but very interesting and true. He was saying that when, when the high priest would go to sprinkle the blood, he would sprinkle the people, sprinkle the holy place and also sprinkle towards <laughs> the ark. <laughs> and he said, wow, did God need forgiveness? <laughs> did God need the blood? <laughs> That's interesting. This is very deep, right? Because God agreed and sent what he loved the most. To be killed. I don't, I don't know if you can understand that. <clears throat> God sent himself what he loved the most to be killed. He decided that. You know what that tells me? That in the place of a deep wound where nothing quite makes sense, you have two choices. One is to stay upset, cover it up with, well, God is God, He does whatever He wants. I'll understand in heaven. Or in in those without that category, maybe some people are still in that rebellion and don't care about listening to God. They run away from that because they just cannot figure it out. Or the more religious ones, like I said, they cover it up and say, "Well, I'll understand in heaven." That's one option. The other option is to go deeper. To go in the lonely place. In the place that seems you were misunderstood, even by God. Because He kind of knew about that and didn't tell you and let you believe something and nothing happened and go and talk to him I am not letting you go said Jacob until you bless me yes he ended up with a broken hip but who cares he got the blessing who cares anything else going in that deep place and say you know this is not over <laughs> I I don't see the big picture I don't understand I thought I have this I thought I am there I thought I'm strong I thought I can kill this disease I can I thought that I'm in faith I thought this I thought this what's going on father Go until you hear him talking to you. John the Baptist he um, he didn't have a chance to have another talk with Jesus. He only got the message that he sent him. And I'm hoping that he, something came to him, the, the, the Holy Spirit came, talked to him right there in the prison, right before they beheaded him. And says, hey, <laughs> this is the real deal. Just rest assured, your time, it's done, but this is a real deal. 
I'm I'm hoping that's what happened, but I'm not sure. Maybe maybe only after he left. <laughs> he saw it. He figured it out. See, we are <laughs> we are in the kingdom of God. The least in the kingdom of God God is greater than John. You can actually go without a curtain and you can start understanding and talking to him and that's gonna heal that deep wound when you bring forgiveness forgiveness that forgiveness has so much power to heal relationships you understand don't let things that are not understood to bring bitterness to you because he wants you to talk to him give me a couple of things that i just want to share with you just because um again i think it's lots of lots of things and lots of thi uh, lots of people that claim things with very little result and yes some people say well we're not grown we're growing we're learning more we're more dependent on god and but maybe <laughs> maybe there's something else maybe that growing is not talking about quantity growing but quality of knowing him this is what he is drawing you to himself and he told me about this authority over the evil one and he says remember remember how i started i give you authority over all the power of the enemy remember how i started I started saying this I saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven I beheld I looked with attention and saw what happened with Satan and then I give you power so he said the devil is defeated it's absolute truth but you don't know it no with caps okay you don't know it you don't know that truth until you see him falling like lightning let this word come deep inside you because it's going to bring an authority dealing with the enemy as you never had before and then he continued to speak to me and he says death is defeated absolutely but you don't know that capitals you don't know that until you possess the keys of death as I did until you possess the keys of death as I did you know it doesn't say Jesus doesn't say I have the keys of life he is life you have everything in what concerns life and godliness everything but as far as death and Hades he says I have the keys go to him talk to him come out of maybe a great defeat a big wrestling in your soul maybe a hardening heart until you heard this message 
I think this stumbling time, this offense time for your life is your maturity exam. And I want you to pass this exam. Because what is on the other side of an exam passed, you cannot even comprehend, even if I told you now. So, go through it. Talk to your father today. Amen.